This is all of the sifted ash in this bucket. I have to compact it. I already did mostly. But it's all pressed down pretty hard into the bottom of the bucket. And then this is where I'll pour the water. And it'll come down into this bucket, which um, you can't really see. There, it's a hole. So I have a bunch of hot water. I'm going to pour through this. is uh, eight liters of water. And hopefully, see that's how much uh, ash is in there. And this is the hot water. <laughs> Gonna put a lid on that. And then hope it stays hot. So it has been like just over 10 minutes. You can hear the drip. You can see the drip. This is my uh, lye water right here. Um, I let it sit in the bucket overnight and then I tried to pour off uh, the clear liquid from the sediment. Um, the very bottom of the bucket I put into this measuring cup uh, so that I could let it settle on its own again. And then I would pour that into this when I think that's clear enough. Yeah, this is my plan anyways. So it's been on the burner for a couple minutes now. It's starting to steam a little. I don't know how hot my flame should be, but that's where it is. <laughs> I think I had about eight liters, and I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this is like five liters? I don't even know my pot sizes. I should uh, do better. <laughs> I reduced it by about half, maybe? Maybe more? There isn't too much lye, I mean, water left, or maybe there is, I don't know. It started spooking me because it had like a, it has a film on top, and so I was like thinking, oh, maybe that's like lye crystals. So if that's lye crystals, then that can't be lye crystals. Maybe it is though. I don't know. See? <laughs> I'm just gonna start using this with uh, oils in it now, though, because I'm scared. I'm gonna make my, I, I'm in, just making like a lye heavy soap as a base, and then I'm gonna play with the base. Uh, signing off. So I added about two cups of oil. Um, it was probably about one and one third uh, lard and two thirds coconut oil. So we'll just see what kind of uh, soap base that'll give me. I'm actually just getting it up to temperature right now. We're in my crock pot. <laughs> and we're at 113 degrees. So this should look very different eventually. But it's going to be, uh, I'm doing a pretty slow process. So this is the soap. It's been cooking. For many hours at uh, we're at 169 right now. I'm going to take see you can see how viscous. Ooh, kind of looks like a liquid soap consistency right now. But I'm gonna blend it. Pretty thick. I'm gonna keep cooking it though. <laughs> the 
this is the product here <laughs> of two days cooking and as you can see there's like different layers oh sorry as you can see there are different layers um, or maybe you can't see it but um, I was every time I came back to stir it it would settle into layers so my thoughts were I was going to try and collect the layers separately and try to use natural methods of testing pH. Uh, right now I'm working on the very bottom layer and uh, it seems to have collected all the sediment and since I plan on using this soap in foamer pumps I don't want this chunky sediment in there so I was thinking maybe I could try to modify this part of the soap paste into a bar of soap. We'll see. You can see the bottom. It's a little, I don't know, different looking. Oh wow, deep purple, that changed immediately. I didn't even need this much soap on my stick. Some of the wasteful, I suppose. That little pockets of liquid right there. Little pocket of liquid there. Um, I would assume that's like a, a lie heavy liquid, but we'll see what this is saying. Oh, again. Again, very, very dark. <laughs> I'm making a mix of everything. And again. <laughs> so dark. Okay, so this is the curry powder, and this is the soap tops. Just turning uh, brownie red. I have a feeling it's going to do the same thing for all of them. This is the soap middles. Mm -hmm. Exact same result. Why would it be different? Soap bottoms. Go the same exact color, probably. Just like the others. So here I have my three separated soap concentrates. My top, my middle, my bottom. And I did pH indicator tests with beet juice and curry powder. And I found a chart online that makes me think that these are all around the pH of 10 so this all of this requires more fat which is just that I as I had hoped um, moving on so this is the middle of the soap paste from when it all separated and I added uh, another three sorry, two-thirds of a cup of oil to it. And then I'm going to just, I'm just going to cook this for a long time and uh, see what happens and test the pH again. It's uh, much more opaque. Yeah. Oh, oh gosh, that was a, an aggressive stir. <laughs> Temperature. Probably around 160. 
So I'm going to keep cooking it. Definitely has a trace though. This is the second cook of the soap paste center and I am done. I will be storing most of it and diluting some of it with a soft water. I decided to mix together the top and bottom of the initial soap paste and now I'm cooking it together <coughs> plus <laughs> um, a little bit of coconut oil and a little bit of camelina oil and I'm gonna try to make a bar we'll see what happens I've been cooking this for a few hours and this is the consistency I'm <laughs> leaving it and right before I'm gonna put it into its little mold. Experimenting with the beet juice as a pH indicator. Again, this is the soap that I will be using in the former pumps and let's see if it's changed any as I'm calling this done. It doesn't look too much different from the original I guess that's a good thing. I'm just gonna stir it in. Kind of looks like my soap is pretty much close enough to neutral where it won't boil my skin off. This is Well, you can kind of see it's a. Uh, it did change it a little. It must be more. a little more alkaline heavy. A clear difference, but. I feel within reason. And we'll see the sky. you can see that there is a difference still more so than the liquid soap that I'm making this is my final soap paste I put it in this jar to store it and uh, I actually diluted it just a tiny bit to make it easier to work with and uh, it looks like mayonnaise Anyways, this is, uh, it was just sort of what didn't fit in the jar. And I just keep slowly adding water to it until I get it to a desired consistency. Um, more water. But uh, I think I'm going to store this also as a little bit of a concentrate. In a, oh, this looks like, this looks like a, the consistency I want. So I want to be able to use a squirt bottle and fill up my foamer pumps and just like partially fill my foamer pumps with this and then fill the rest again with more soft water but yeah so that's my system let's see how well it works this is my diluted soap paste for this foamer pump it uh, has a very nice texture to it it's almost uh, I'm tempted to use it in a normal pump just because of how pretty it is. I think it's interesting how this is sort of clear and my soap paste is just like uh, opaque bubbles. <laughs> There's a couple things I'm excited about. One of them would be obviously trying out my liquid soap in the foamer pump. So I'm just going to be adding my hard water into this bottle just because that's normally how I do it. Oh, that's too much water. And pump it out. Oops. Oh, so here we go. That is how it looks. 
amazing. Soap everywhere. Cleaned off nice. And then this here, you can see the difference in consistency. So this is just the plain old uh, diluted liquid soap. And then this is it with uh, a little bit of tea tree added into it. Because I train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I'm just afraid of cooties and this sort of eases my mind. So I'll shower with this. And that's it. It's a nice little foam. I can smell tea tree. There's about 30 drops of tea tree in there. It'll last me a while. So nice. It's so nice. These big and span. This is the result of <clears throat> cooking the bottom and top of the initial soap paste with a little bit of extra coconut oil and camelina oil and it's pretty hard. I was gonna take it out. I'm trying to go slow because at the very end it just tries to snap through. <laughs> oh. I feel like it'd be better with just a knife or something. I tried cutting it with this wavy cutter. I tried cutting it with the knife. I tried breaking it. And, uh... Both of the knives sort of expose the weak points from my pour. Soap mold is the bottom of a vinegar jug, and I must say <laughs> it doesn't speak much to my quality, but these are probably the best bars I've ever made. 